Hey y'all, I'm Christine Marie and I'm your charcuterie queen and today we will talk about what is a charcuterie board. Now a lot of people have asked me, how did you get into making charcuterie boards? Well, when I was a young gal, I don't know about y'all, but at every single family gathering, we always had to have a meat and cheese platter. So as I grew up, the meat and cheese platter grew up too. It transformed into this huge trend in the food industry. I love charcuterie boards because you get to design them. It's kind of, you know, painting your canvas. There's so many different textures and flavors. It just really makes such a great presentation to impress your guests. Think of it like a Lunchable before adults. Plus it pairs fine with wine. What is a charcuterie board you ask? Well, it's not just your average meat and cheese platter. It's your meat and cheese, but complemented with your fruits, nuts, crackers, etc. You name it, it can go on your charcuterie board. So the reason behind the charcuterie board, think of it like the meat and cheese is your outfit. You look good, right? But you want to look even better. So you add accessories. So accessories, that would be your, your pickles, your nuts, your fruit, your crackers. There's so many different things to accessorize your outfit and your meat and cheese board. And how do you make that charcuterie board? Well, it's easy. And guess what? The best part, you probably already have all the ingredients in your fridge and pantry. Now before I even get into how you make this beautiful board, I always like to rely on the three B's. Bountiful, bold, and balanced. Now, bountiful shows that you have a lot of different varieties and options for your guests. There's so many different flavors to choose from that it's easy to make sure that you have enough to make sure your guests are nice and full. Bold, that goes into the flavors, right? So you have so many different types of flavors. Think of spicy, think of sweet and savory and salty. All of those flavors you can have on just one board. And lastly, think of balance. You wanna make sure that everything complements each other. And that, like I already explained in the beginning of the video, your complements are those accessories that I discussed before. So as long as everything pairs nicely together, you'll be just fine. Now here's an example of a charcuterie board that I already designed. And now I can go into some detail as to how I, you know, formulate and design the charcuterie board. I do have your meat and cheese, which is basically the star of the show. So I always like to put those in the middle. I also have some meat on the side and some cheese on the side, but choose your best cheese and meat to go in the center of your board. I also have these bowls of different accessories such as roasted nuts, fruit, pickles, and I like to put that on the board as well because those are your pillars. They really help lay the groundwork of your board. From there I add a different amount of accessories such as your crackers, I have Triscuits there, champagne grapes, I have some fruit and I added some of these cranberries just to add a little more pop in texture and color. I always like to have some sort of sauce and here is mustard. You'll always find that pairs very well with cheese and meat. And over here on the goat cheese, I have a strawberry jam. This tastes mighty fine with this type of cheese. I hope you enjoyed learning more about charcuterie boards. Please stay tuned for additional videos which will include how to build a charcuterie board on a budget and a separate video for tips and tricks where you can find all your different ingredients and how to make that board pop. Thanks for spending time with me today. Bye y'all!